Hey, hello guys! In this video, I'm gonna teach you three different ways that you can use to create really awesome carousels or sliders in Adobe XD with the prototype mode and also with the same component feature. I'm gonna show you one example like this one right now. Okay, you're gonna learn that and even more, so stay till the end of this video. And without any more delay, let's just start designing. Okay, to start guys, I'm gonna share with you a file that is gonna be this one, that is gonna be how to create designs and carousels and sliders in Adobe XD. And it's gonna be in the description of this video and also I'm gonna pin it in the comments. It's gonna be a file exactly like this, which is gonna have four artworks, one with the elements and colors, and the other artworks are gonna be with the different types of components that we're gonna create right now. To start really simply, we're gonna create some squares. We're gonna create, let me create one square right here. This is gonna be the example of a slider that we're gonna use in the first to connect screens, just using the connecting mode in Adobe XD. I'm I'm gonna trim, uh, like make the borders a little bit rounded over there. I'm gonna remove the border and I'm gonna change the color of the element right now. But instead of doing it like this, I have a better way of doing it. If you take these colors that I have in the palette right now and you select them all, you, you're gonna click it right now and you're gonna see the document assets. You're gonna see in the libraries and you're gonna have the document assets right at the top and you're gonna click in there and you're gonna click colors and it's gonna add all the colors in your library. And it's really helpful and you'll see why. I'm gonna create the second artboard and I'm gonna try to have them with the same gap maybe 25 will be fine and uh, I'm gonna just gonna copy it next to it at 25 too and I'm gonna select the three of them and I'm gonna shrink them a little bit something like that will be fine I'm gonna group them after I group them I'm gonna start selecting one by one each of them I'm gonna first make the first one orange the second one is gonna be like a light blue and the third one is gonna be a green one the next step will be if you take the artboard from the corner that I have right here you can create a little bit you can create a guide we're gonna create a guide where this artboard starts and we're gonna take the same artboard and and we're gonna press option and we're gonna click the, the artboard and we're gonna press option and we're gonna drag it to the side. If I press shift, it snaps at the same height of the same element. We're, that's gonna do it with us with 60 pixels as the spacing in between them. And there's gonna be the screen. We're gonna do it this again. We're gonna just copy the artboard twice. We're gonna have something like this. Really simple, really easy to follow. Let's go with the next step. I'm gonna select the second artboard and I'm gonna take the elements pressing shift and I'm gonna drag the blue square till it touches. Do you see the the little guide that I, that I copied before till it touches that guide. And then the, the third artboard is gonna do the same, but this time with the, with the green square. Everything is perfect now. And as you can see, we're gonna have three artboards that are gonna look something like this. It's gonna be the orange one, then the blue one, and then the green one. One way that you can create the slider is this simple way. You're gonna go to the option, you're gonna press option two, or you can, or alt two, which is the command to go to the prototype mode, which is read right here at the top. And you're gonna select the first artboard and you're gonna link it link it to the second one and the trigger is gonna be time and let's do it with zero seconds with a delay of one second and we're gonna do it with the auto animate feature so it's gonna be triggered with time the action is gonna be the action type will be auto animate and the destination will be connect the screens that that one dash one because it's the one that we create and um, the duration is gonna be one second with the easing in and out the next step will be selecting the other artboard and doing the same thing because it's gonna remember the same settings that we applied before and if you can see right now I'm gonna press command enter or just the play button right here and you can see the animation how it goes. We can loop the animation if we just select this artboard and we just link it back to the first one and at the same time we just change the trigger from one second to two seconds and it's supposed to be like this. It go all the way back and it just the slides by itself. So we're creating a loop of an animation that looks really, really nice. If you feel like it goes really fast and you don't want it to go so fast, you select the first artboard and in the delay, you can add a little bit of a delay before the timer start, or starts. For example, if I add two seconds in each one, we're gonna have to add it in the two seconds right here. And then this one is gonna have a delay of two seconds too. So as you can see, the animation is not gonna start unless they have two seconds of delay. So this is one, two, and then it's gonna have the next animation and one, two, and it's gonna go all the way back to the beginning. That's a simple way of doing it with a prototype mode, adding the trigger of time and also using the other trigger, which is gonna be the auto anime feature in Adobe XD. Let's go with a different way. So there is another way of doing it. And this way is to click to progress. This is a different way that we're gonna do this. It's gonna be similar to the one at the top. So I can just borrow these same elements right now. Let me go to the option one to go back to the design mode. It could be alt one. And then I'm gonna just gonna press command C and I'm gonna take it to the second artboard and I'm gonna paste it right here. That's perfect. So I'm gonna repeat 
repeat the same process. I'm gonna take the little line, the get the guide, and I'm gonna put it right here just to have a, have it right there. And the next step for me will be to actually work a little bit this. Let me see. I'm gonna just shrink it a little bit more, move it a little bit to the side, and I'm gonna create some because I, I need to click to progress is a way that we can actually control it. I'm gonna take these two arrows that I have right here and I'm gonna press option and I can just drag them right here to the arbor where I need them right now. So I'm gonna create a little bit of a square of maybe this size. Let's do a square of maybe 200. Let me change the size to 200 right here and we're gonna remove the border and the color of the square supposed to be, to be this color that we have right here that we already saved. So I'm gonna click this color. I'm gonna change it to the hex colors so I can actually have the color right there and instead of a solid color color I wanted to have like a linear gradient the linear gradient we're gonna edit it to make it to the side and then we're gonna move this a little bit more to the side to something like this and then we're gonna take this all the way there like we're trying to make instead of a dark color right here what we could do is just simply take this number which is gonna be the color of the artboard so we're gonna have the color of the artboard in the first color and in the second color is gonna be the same color of the artboard however we're gonna change here the transparency to zero and it's supposed to look like something like this and we're I, I did it wrong I did it backwards but you can actually still flip it all the time so it's still fine I'm gonna take this I'm gonna add the arrow right now and I'm gonna try to align it to it so I'm gonna select both of the elements and I'm gonna go with the line tool and I'm gonna align them all the way to the middle uh, twice so we're gonna align it vertically and horizontally now I'm gonna just send this to the back take both of them I'm gonna group them and I'm gonna bring them to the front so you just bring to bring it to the front you just bring forward it was just doing the commands bring to the front and that's pretty much it I'm gonna copy it all the way to the other corner of the artboard I'm gonna try to align it I'm gonna apply the same effect that I told you right now you just click the flip horizontal way and we can just get rid with the other of the other arrow now the next step will be to create a trigger for all the actions I'm gonna take again the side of the artboard and I'm gonna create another guide after we create this guy we're gonna press option and we're gonna drag it to the side and then we're just gonna Gonna create two artboards more in these two new artboards what we're gonna do is simply in this in the click to progress we're gonna go select the element and we're gonna drag it to the guy that we just create just to have it in the exact same place that's perfect and we're gonna do the same with the third one you just press option and you just move it to the side till you have it over there since this cannot go like farther that way we just need to go to click the arrow and reduce the opacity maybe to a uh, 12 percent will be fine and then in the first one we should do the same thing reduce the opacity of the arrow to a 12 percent let me do it real quickly 12 percent we're gonna have something similar to this just Stay with me. The next step will be pressing option two and going to the prototype mode again. And we're gonna use the trigger for this action that is gonna be the arrow. And the arrow is gonna take us to the next artboard and it's gonna be with the action type of auto animate. And it's gonna take us with the ease in out and we're gonna change the duration to maybe one second. And then the next artboard is gonna be linked. The arrow is gonna link to the first one with the same settings that we already did before and to the second one to the third one with the same settings that we already did before the third one is going to be click and it's going to link to the second artboard and there's not going to be a link either here or here because you cannot even go all the way to the back or all the way to the front it looks a little bit weird so if we take a look at the design this time we supposedly be able to change the slider in the order that we want it because we can go back and forward in the slider isn't that really good you can do this with all your images with all your design and it's gonna look really 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 nice let's go with the third one and this is the most exciting one because this is the coolest one you don't need to do it with a prototype mode but it's a little bit more tricky just stay with me in this design okay guys we're gonna create the slider in a component level what I mean by a component level is a little bit trickier but it's really 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 good and you will see why we're gonna take the same elements that we have from before and we're gonna copy them and we're gonna paste them right here same design from the top you just copy and you just paste it down and the next step will be press command K or just making a component out of it I'm gonna select it again the, the guide I'm gonna put the guide right here just to know where the slider is supposed to start and the next step will be to create a default state that we already have we're gonna go with the hover state and then the default state that we already have we're gonna go add a new state and the state 2 is gonna be slide slide 2 and we're gonna create another state that is gonna be called slide three after we have these three states we're gonna go back to the default state and we're gonna go to the second slide in the states in a component level and we're gonna select double click the component and we're gonna drag the second slide 
to match where it was the first one before in the default state. We're gonna click it and we're gonna go again. We just click again to go to a different state, which is gonna be the third state. And in the slide three state, we're just gonna click it over again and we're just gonna drag it again to the side to match the guide that we just create. It's gonna be something like this. So if we go back to the beginning, it's gonna be default state. You cannot go back. We're gonna go to the slide two, but in the slide two, I, I wanna have the option to go back to the slide one. So I need to take this arrow and instead of having it in 12%, I'm just gonna have it in 100%. And we're gonna go again to the third slide and we're gonna double click the arrow again and we're gonna change it to 100. But this one is just simply gonna go back to 12 because you cannot go farther than that. So we're gonna go all the way back to the default state. And the best part of the component is that I don't need to create different artboards and I can use them across the whole UI UX design that I'm creating in Adobe XD or the prototype. Let me show you real quickly. The next step is a crucial part. This is the most complicated one, but please, I'm gonna try to explain it the best way possible. Pressing option two, we're gonna go to the prototype mode or alt two. And in the prototype mode, we're gonna click the main component in the default state. And we're gonna try to click twice to get to the arrow in particular, and we're gonna click it. And it's gonna go with the type of the transition is gonna be auto animate. And instead of choosing an artboard, we're gonna choose a state, which is the state that's gonna be slide two. So this arrow is gonna take us to the state of the slide two with an auto animate with an is in out with a duration of one second. We're gonna go click out outside of it again. We click again in the component. We go to the slide two and I want this time to click twice to the arrow and I'm gonna activate it by saying, I want this to take me to the default state, which is the first one in a uh, is in and out of one second. That's perfect. We're gonna click the other arrow and this one needs to take me to the to the green one, which is gonna be the third one. So I'm gonna click it slide three and it's gonna take me with an easy in and out in one second and auto animate effect. I'm gonna click outside of them. I'm gonna click them again. I'm gonna go to the slide three. In the slide three, I just need to select the arrow again and this arrow is gonna it's gonna be triggered and it's gonna take me to the slide two, simply as that. And I'm just gonna click outside of them, go to the component, leave it in the default state, and I'm gonna play it right now. What the component level does is that it actually learn how to do all the states in a component that you can use across the website and you can paste in any artboard and you can reuse as many times as you want. Let me show you real quickly. If I click, it's gonna take me to the next one, then to the next one. This one doesn't have a link because it's impossible to do and I can go all the way back to the first one. So we learned that creating a slider as a component is the most efficient way because we can only, we just do it with only one artboard. You don't need, you, there is no need to do all these other options just to show that because the first, in my opinion, the best option is the creating the slider as a component just creating it in one single piece because the other great thing about it is just like so let me give you a different example now I'm gonna just gonna copy this artboard again and I'm gonna go with the, some plugins right now I'm gonna select a plugin I'm gonna select them and with the photo splash too I'm just gonna I'm just gonna click for something that says like landscapes and we're gonna select these three landscapes we're gonna apply it to the three images of the slider and then we're gonna go to the other state and we're gonna do the same thing. Select the images again, apply three photos, and then we're gonna go to the next state and we're gonna do the same thing. Selecting the three of them, apply three photos. If I go back to the default state, and I click the slider again, it's not gonna only work with my images, but it's gonna also work with anything that I put inside the slider. So this is a practical way of seeing it, how it works. And this brings us to the end of the video, but now is your turn. Let me know in the comments below, which is your favorite way of creating slidings and carousels in Adobe XD. If you find this content helpful, please give it a like. Thank you so much for watching, and I guess I'll see you again in the next video.